हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल so sometimes in the post operative period some patient develop inflammation which was not expected and uh, we suspect it to be a tas which is toxic anterior shock syndrome which uh, is uh, because of some of the toxins which entered the eye during the surgery and uh, there is always a confusion whether it is a tas or it's a infective etiology like uh, endophthalmitis so here dr suhas sonawne has uh, sent me a very interesting and very important video how to differentiate between the two and how the management differs for, uh, between tas and endophthalmitis so go through this video it's a very useful video for all surgeons dear friends today i am going to discuss how to differentiate between tas and endophthalmitis let us assume the situation that one find that you are operated uh, three cases for cataract surgery you are done nice facial resection with foldable oil there is no problem in the surgery but when you open up the patch in next day for the dressing you feel devastated by seeing the horrible post operative result that the eye is full of cordial edema there is a fibrin reaction with hypopion you never expected this kind of result uh, next day in spite of uh, beautiful surgery you are in dilemma what is it is it end off or is it tas what should i do now should i give intravitreal and whether to continue the surgery for the next day so here i am going to tell you the how you can differentiate the tas from infectious end of thermitis so what is tas tas is a sterile post operative inflammatory reaction caused by non infectious substance which enters into anterior segment during the surgery and it causes toxic damage to intraocular structures tas is very difficult to differentiate it from the infectious end of thermitis because there will be a severe inflammatory reaction with uh, with fibrin development with hypopion in both situation as tas as well as in end of thermitis however there are certain clinical feature which can definitely differentiate it uh, from the infectious end of thermitis which are these are called as hallmarks of tas like it uh, the the onset is within 12 to 24 hours limbus to limbus cordial edema vitreous is relatively clear and dramatic response to steroid but none of the signs are specific enough to diagnose tas or exclude infectious end of thermitis the causes of tas it is a non infectious reaction to toxic substance that enter inside the eye for example irrigating solution viscoelastic intracameral drug like pilocarpine moxifloxacin chemical residues so let us compare each clinical feature of tas and infectious uh, end of thermitis in detail coming to the onset tas usually appear between 12 to 24 hours after the surgery and acute end of thermitis usually develop between 4 to 7 days however certain fulminant end of thermitis like uh, like pseudomonas end of thermitis or bacillus cereus end of thermitis can develop within uh, 48 hours time but their presentation usually later as compared to tas comparing to the visual symptoms in tas there will be a blurring of vision or mild to moderate visual loss however in acute end of thermitis visual loss can be performed in tas there will not be any pain or there will be just mild to moderate type of pain however in end of thermitis there will be a severe pain and pain can be present in 75% of end of thermitis cases symptoms like headache increasing redness discharge photophobia are more in end of thermitis and they usually absent in tas upper lip edema is usually present in acute end of thermitis cases and lip edema in tas is usually uncommon signs like congenital congestion and kibosis are usually more often in end of thermitis cases and in tas these signs are minimal now coming to the corneal edema corneal edema in tas is variable and widespread and it is the hallmark of the tas there will be a diffuse total corneal edema from limbus to limbus corneal edema in end of thermitis will be localized and more patchy 
the pupil in tas it will be dilated irregular and it will it is fixed it will not react to light because of sphincter damage and the pupil in endophthalmitis may be meiotic may be variable this is reaction there will be mild to severe reaction with sales flare and hypopion fibrin formation over the iris and over the anterior surface of the eye in tas exudate usually white in acute endophthalmitis there will be marked inflammatory response in the ac with hypopion and exudate usually yellowish intraocular pressure in tas usually on higher side sometimes it can go as high as up to 40 to 60 mm of mercury intraocular pressure in endophthalmitis is usually normal the fundal glow in tas will be normal or mildly poor but fundal glow in endophthalmitis will be poor or upset in tas fibrinoid reaction usually in anterior chamber there will be no retinal involvement however in endophthalmitis there will be a retinal periphrabitis and mid peripheral retinal hemorrhages in early stages in tas vitreous is usually clear and in endophthalmitis there will be a marked inflammation in the vitreous in b scan in tas vitreous cavity is usually clear whereas in endophthalmitis there will be mild to moderate echos in the vitreous cap gram stain and culture from the vitreous tap and ac tap will be negative in tas cases however they usually comes positive in acute endophthalmitis so there will be a dramatic response to steroid in tas cases however in endophthalmitis there will be temporary suppression of inflammation because of visual outcome usually better in cases of tas as compared to acute endophthalmitis there will be a dramatic response to steroid in tas cases you have to give a topical steroids or systemic steroids and also you can give iv steroids like dexamethasone or hydrocortisone at least for 5 days these are the photographs of resolution of tas following cataract surgery so dear friend how to prevent tas never use chemical sterilization for your ophthalmic instruments avoid detergent and enzymatic powder to clean ophthalmic cannulated instruments after the surgery clean all your instrument thoroughly make them dry if you are using ultrasonic cleaner to clean your instrument then change your bath solution every time minimize intracameral drugs like moxifloxacin pilocarpine nadenanin niblocaine and finally use good quality of irrigating solutions viscoelastic materials and oils thank you for listening this